Hello Math Typers and welcome to the fourth video in our series of four introductory videos to the MathType web interface. So far we've seen how to open MathType and create a simple formula and we've seen how to create piecewise functions and have been introduced to equation alignment and MathType's auto format feature. In this video we'll see MathType's contextual tab and how by using the tools available on this tab you can fine-tune the appearance of your equations to be exactly what you want. There are so many situations that arise when writing equations that to include them all in MathType's toolbar would introduce unnecessary complexity. What about interval notation? Bracketed expressions with a larger numerator than denominator or vice versa? Or a matrix where you want some columns to be aligned differently from other columns? Those are just a few examples where MathType's contextual tab is useful. This tab is the one at the far right, the only red one. Notice the buttons sometimes change. That's what makes it contextual. Its appearance depends on the location and context of the insertion point. Recall in the previous tutorial we needed to add one additional row to the existing function. We also saw a situation requiring aligning two equations at the equal symbol. In this tutorial we'll continue with those two equations and show not only how to align at the equal symbol but how to align the rest of it like this. Let's get started. We'll begin by typing the equations. That's easy enough. Just press enter after the first one. With the insertion point, that is the cursor, anywhere in either of the two lines, select the contextual tab and click the relational line button. Doing so will align multiple lines on whatever relational symbol appears in each line equals, not equals, proportional, less than or equal, etc. So it's not only for equations. Note that if there is more than one relational symbol on a line, MathType will use only the first one for alignment purposes. Sometimes what we see here is exactly what we want. For the purpose of this tutorial though, it's not the look we're after. We want the X to line up in each line, and the plus, and the minus, and the Y, in the relational symbols, and we want the sum difference to be decimal aligned or right aligned if there's no decimal. To do that, we'll have to retype it. The best way to arrange something like this is in a matrix. It's worth noting here that if you're producing materials for individuals with low vision or are blind, aligning the equations probably isn't of great importance. Using a table or a matrix simply for visual effect, such as we're doing here, will make it a great deal more difficult for someone using a screen reader to understand the content. The point is not that you should never align equations in this way. The point is you need to consider your full audience. Back to typing our equations, we'll be typing the coefficient, x, and the operator symbol in the first cell, the coefficient, y, and relational symbol in the second cell, and the sum or difference in the third cell. We need a matrix with as many rows as we have equations, and we need one more column than variables. So in this case, that's a two by three matrix. We haven't seen yet how to enter matrices, so let's open the matrices and elementary tab in MathType. Notice there's only a limited number of matrices to choose from, but your choices are actually pretty much limitless. The 10 matrices shown in the second and third groups on the tab are indeed fixed size matrices. Consider the one we used in the previous tutorial for typing a piecewise function. I told you in that video we'd have to go to the contextual tab if we wanted to add more rows to it. To do that, we'd insert the template, then with the insertion point inside any of the elements of the matrix, go to the contextual tab. The six icons directly beneath the label for the Greek letters tab are the ones that allow you to add and remove rows and columns. In the case where we wanted a new row, we'd use either this one or this one, depending on where we wanted the row, above or below the current one. Back to our scenario, we're typing a system of equations and we need a 2x3 matrix. 
To get a 2x3, first click the 3x3 shown in the upper left. This opens a grid where you can either drag to get the size you want, don't click and drag, just drag, or use the boxes at the bottom to get the size you need. When we're finished typing it, we'll have something like this. We want right alignment on all three columns, but we must do them separately. Click inside the first column, either row, and then on the contextual tab, click align right. Repeat with the other two columns. There's one final adjustment to make so our equations look normal, and that is to reduce the spacing between the columns. That's also on the contextual tab. This will affect the column spacing to the right of the current column, so you'll have to do it for all the columns except the one at the far right. Try different values if you want, but we think zero pixels looks pretty good. Now ours looks like the one you saw at the beginning of this tutorial. There are many adjustments you can make from this contextual tab. The purpose of this tutorial has been to get you in the habit of looking at the contextual tab if you need to make fine adjustments to the appearance of your equations. The contextual tab is covered in greater detail elsewhere in the documentation. We hope these tutorial videos have been useful to you. If there's something else you'd like to see as a video, let us know here by writing a comment below if you're viewing this on YouTube, or by writing us at support at wireless.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be notified of new content. Happy math typing!